Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. In today's tutorial, we're keeping it simple and making a bomber vest hoodie. For this casual affair, we're working with the Suzette stitch for our panels, clean double slips for our band, and hood. Simple, clean, and stylish. Speaking of, if you're a fan of clean modern makes, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of crochet tutorials and patterns with even more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category of 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 330 grams of yarn, and that's 735 yards if you're stateside and the individual measurements will be on the screen. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you had a movie made about your life, who would you want to play you? I would choose Jack Black because I think he would do very well as a young me. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this vest started, we're all going to grab our primary color, category 4 yarn, and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 6mm hook, and start off by making an odd number chain that reaches from the base of our neck down to where we like the bottom of this vest to be, keeping in mind that we will have a bottom band. I'd like for mine to be from the base of my neck down to my waist. So I'm going to start by making a chain 39, and that's roughly 10 inches or 25 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first Suzette stitch row. So we're all going to start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 1. Now that chain 1 doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. From here, our Suzette stitches is just going to be a single crochet and double crochet into the same stitch. So into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert, starting with a single crochet, so bring your hook down, into that chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, that's our single crochet, and now a double crochet into the same stitch, so yarn over, into that same stitch that the single crochet is in, insert, pull through, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now that is our first Suzette stitch set. Getting started on the following Suzette stitch set, we are always going to skip the following stitch right after a Suzette stitch set is finished because this double crochet will count as that following stitch. If we work directly into there, we'll be accidentally increasing. So we are going to skip one stitch into the next, insert with another Suzette stitch set, so a single crochet, and then into that same stitch, a double crochet. Let's do this just once more. Right after that set is finished, skip one stitch, into the next with a single crochet and double crochet. And continue with our Suzette stitch sets until we all have two chains left. We are back. We are nearly finished with our row one. We should all have two chains left. Now for this portion, which is the neckline, at the end of every odd number row, we're going to be doing an increase of three half double crochets. So all we're going to do is yarn over, skip that following stitch, which is the second to last, and then into that last insert with three half doubles. So pull through, and pull through all three, there's my first half double, yarn over, insert into that same last chain, pull through all three with a second half double, and then into that same last chain with a third half double crochet. Now everyone's row one is complete. So getting started on row two, which will not have any increases or decreases, chain one and flip. 
we're going to do our Suzette stitches all the way down. So into that first available stitch, insert with a single crochet and double crochet. Again, skip a stitch, remembering we always skip that following stitch, into the next, insert with a single and double. And we're going to continue on with this until we all have two stitches left. And just as a really quick tip, every Suzette stitch set is now going to be worked into our previous rows single crochet stitch to get the texture that we want. So right after the set, what we're going to do is skip that following stitch, and we know that that's a double crochet because it's a little bit taller than the following stitch, and then into that stitch, we're going to insert with our Suzette stitch set. So skip one, which should be the double from our previous row, into the next, insert with a Suzette stitch set. We're now at the end of our row two. We should all have one, two stitches left. If it looks like we just have one stitch, that second stitch should be there. It might just be a little bit tucked underneath because of that single crochet. But what we're going to do, since we need the bottom of this piece to be blunt, we're just going to yarn over and half double crochet into the last stitch. So skip that stitch and then into the next, insert with a half double crochet. And now our row two is complete. From here, it's gonna be a repeat of our two previous rows. So just to make sure we have it down, we're gonna chain one to get started on our row three, flip our work, and do our Suzette stitch sets until we all have two stitches left. We are at the end of our row three. We should all have two stitches left, and now we're gonna finish off this row since it's an odd number row with an increase of three half doubles. So yarn over, skip one stitch, into the next, which is the last stitch from our previous row, insert with a half double crochet. Then, two more into that same last stitch. So there's my second, there's my third, and our row three is complete. Now let's get started on a row four, so chain one, flip our work, do your Suzette stitches all the way down until we all have two stitches left. We are at the end of our row four. We should all have two stitches left, and to close off every even number row, we're just gonna half double crochet into the last stitch. So skip that second to last stitch and half double, and that's it. From here, just continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have a portion that can reach from mid chest around our neck, since this is at a curve, until this reaches the top of our shoulder. We all wanna make sure that this ends right after an odd number row, so along the top, and then I'll meet you back so we can do our shoulder from there. But as you guys can see, I have already finished up one of mine. So I have a total of 11 rows and my width is roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. But once you have yours all finished up, we're going to do our first shoulder row together. So since we should all be along the top, we're gonna chain one and flip our work and then do our Suzette stitch sets all the way down. So I've made my way down with my first shoulder row we should all have two stitches left, and all we're gonna do is just half double crochet into that last stitch. And since this is the shoulder portion, we aren't gonna be doing any increases or decreases at all. So from here, just chain one, flip your work, do our Suzette stitch row all the way down, closing off the row with a half double crochet the same way that we just did. Continue to repeat this half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until we have a shoulder portion that can reach over to the corner of our underarm and I'll meet you guys back along the bottom or right after an even number row. All right, so we are back. My shoulder portion is now complete. I now have a total of 16 rows and my width is now six inches or 15 centimeters. And now we're gonna finish up our front panel with our underarm. Now all we're gonna do is insert our stitch marker into any even numbered stitch from the top, right where the corner of our underarm is. So for those of you that have my numbers, I have inserted my stitch marker into the 18th stitch from the top. That's roughly six inches or 15 centimeters. Now from here, we're going to do our following Suzette stitch row. Since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're gonna make our way all the way up and I will meet you guys back when we have four stitches left right before our stitch marker. So I am back and my first underarm row is nearly complete. I have one, two, three, four stitches left right before my stitch marker. And now we're gonna do a decrease of three half doubles. So yarn over. Skip that fourth to last stitch into the following, which is the third to last, pull through, second to last, pull through, and then into that last, pull through for five loops on our hook, 
then yarn over and pull through all five of those loops. Now for the underarm portion, we're going to be decreasing into every other row. So for the following row, chain one, flip your work, and then just make your way all the way down with our Suzette stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So the last stitch will just be a half double crochet into the last stitch. Then the following row, we're going to close off with a decrease and we'll meet back together to do that. So to start off that row, chain one, flip your work, do our Suzette stitch set all the way back up until we have four stitches left again. We are back and we should all have our third row. For that third row, we should all have one, two, three, four stitches left. And just like our first underarm row, we're now going to do a decrease of three half doubles. So all we're going to do is yarn over. Skip that following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, which is the third to last stitch, insert pull through. Next stitch, pull through, and then next stitch, which should be the last stitch, pull through for five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all five, and that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can reach over to mid underarm. We want to make sure that we're ending right after an odd number row, so along the top, and then once we have this total width, do a chain up of one and cut. Then I'll meet you back. We are back and our underarm is complete. Now I have a total of 19 rows and my width is roughly 7 inches or 18 centimeters. And once we have one entire front panel all finished up, we're going to make another identical panel. Once we have both of them all finished up, I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the back panel. So now that we have both of our front panels completed, we're now going to get started on the back. So that's going to start off fairly simply. We're all going to start by making a chain for the same amount of stitches that we have for our last underarm row. It should be an odd number, and for those of you that have my numbers, I had a total of 29 stitches for this last row, so I'm going to make a chain of 29. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row for our back panel. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and we're going to do our Suzette stitch row all the way down, closing off the row with an increase of three. So as a refresher, into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with our first Suzette stitch set, so that's going to be one single, and then also one double crochet. Continue on with our Suzette stitch sets until we all have two chains left. Our row one is nearly complete. We should all have two chains left, and now we're all going to close off the row with an increase of three half doubles. So yarn over. Insert your hook into the last chain with one, into the same last chain with two, and then same last chain again with a third half double crochet. Now this underarm portion is going to be pretty much the same increases that we did for the front panel. So every even number row is not going to have any increases or decreases, and then every odd number row is going to end with an increase of three half doubles. We're just going to continue on with these rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as the front panel. Now I had a total of three underarm rows for the front panel, so I'll meet you guys back when I have three of these rows, and then we can get started on the width of our back panel from there. All right, we are back. I have finished up the entirety of my underarm for the back panel. Now I have a total of three rows, because I had three rows for my front panel, and this width is roughly an inch and a half or four centimeters. Now from here, we're all going to make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on the front panel's underarm portion. So for those of you that have my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 18th stitch from the top. So on this side, I made a chain 18. Now from here, we're going to get started on the width of the back panel. So we're going to continue to do our Suzette stitch rows, but now with absolutely no increases and no decreases working our way across our back. So I'm just going to do the first one with you, and I'll meet you back once we're finished up with the width of the back panel to do the underarm together. We're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Then into that chain that we blocked off with the second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet. And then into that same chain with a double crochet. Continue on with our Suzette stitch sets to reach the end of the row, making sure that we close off this row and every row for this portion with just one half double crochet into that last stitch. I'll meet you guys back right after an even number row or along the bottom once we have this width completed. All right, so we are back. The width of my back panel is complete. 
I have a total of 38 rows. My width is now 12 inches or 30 centimeters. And now we're just going to do our second underarm. But the second underarm is actually going to be done exactly the same way as the front panel's underarm. So I'm just going to talk you guys through it. We're all going to start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of stitches that we inserted into for the front panel. So for me, that was 18. Then, since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're going to do our Suzette stitch set all the way up until we have four stitches left right before our stitch marker. Then into the three stitches right before the stitch marker, we're going to do a decrease of three half doubles. Our following row is not going to have any increases or decreases, and that's it. Continue to repeat those rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as all of our other underarms, and then once we do, do a chain up a one and cut. Once when our back panel is complete, we're now going to seam our shoulders. So all we're going to do is take one of our front panels and place it on top of our back panel, making sure that the underarms for the front and back panel are aligned, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are then going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Then all we're going to do is single crochet in through both the front and the back panel at the same time, and we are going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So this is my first side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook in through that front panel. And then into the back panel, I'm going to find that same top loop for that same first row. And then insert in through there as well. And then if you don't want to weave in your tail ends, just go ahead and place your tail end over your hook. And then single crochet around everything. Let's do that again. This is my following side row right here. So I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook in through there within the front panel. Find the second side row within the back panel, find that top loop within the back panel, insert your hook in through there, and then single crochet. And since this is our second row, we're going to be doing another single crochet. So just into that same top loop within the front and the back, it should be a little bit easier now since everything's already gathered for us. And single crochet. That's it. We are back. We have just finished up seaming our shoulder, and now we're going to seam our sides. So all we're going to do is make sure the work is flipped wrong side out, meaning the seams for the shoulders are still along the outside. And then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to single crochet in through both the front and the back panel, but it's going to be a little bit easier than the shoulder because we have actual stitches to work into. So start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. First stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. Let's do this again. First stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, single crochet, and then next stitch into the front, next stitch into the back, and single. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our bottom band. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning all the seams are along the inside. And we want to make sure that the bottom of our work is away from us. Then we're all going to be inserting our six millimeter hook into the left corner stitch of the front panel. We're doing this so that we can all see the front of the single crochet rows, so it's a little bit prettier. And then we're just going to do a single crochet row with our primary color yarn. So go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now all we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. So pretty much the same way that we did the seam for the shoulder, we're all going to start by finding our first side row. I'm going to insert my hook in through that top loop with one single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two singles. So there's one into that same top loop. There's two and that's pretty much it. We're going to continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. When we make our way all the way around to this corner right over here, do a chain up a one and cut, and then I'll meet you back with your secondary color yarn. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our single crochet row with our primary color yarn. We did do a chain up a one and cut, and now we're going to do another single crochet row with our secondary color yarn. So we're going to insert our hook into the same corner that we inserted our first hook into when we got started with our first single crochet row. And then with our secondary color yarn, just put one single crochet into every stitch. When we make our way all the way around, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back to get started on the length. All right, so our single crochet row with our secondary color yarn is complete. 
We did do a chain up a one and cut and now we're going to do our bottom band and we're going to need to insert our hook into the same corner stitch that we did for our previous single crochet rows again just so that the front of our ribbing for the bottom band can be shown. Then we're going to insert our secondary color yarn onto our hook and then make a chain the length that we'd like for the bottom band to be. And I'd like for mine to be just about an inch and a half or four centimeters so I'm going to chain seven. Now that we have our chain we're going to do a double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain three. That chain three doesn't count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. And then we're going to double crochet into every chain. So yarn over. Insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off or the fourth chain from our hook. So bring your hook down into that chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Continue with one double crochet into every chain. Our double crochet row is complete. Now let's connect it into the base. So all we're going to do to connect our double crochet row is count up the next two available stitches. There's one, there's two, slip stitch into that second stitch into the base. Now that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then in order to work our way up to the following row, which is a slip stitch row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, still does not count as a stitch, and flip our work. Then from here, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, yarn over and gently pull through everything on our hook. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch's back loop, insert, Yarn over and gently pull through everything. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now that we're at the end of our row two, it's going to be a two row repeat. So our following row is going to be another double crochet row, but now within the back loops. So let's all start with a chain three and flip. Now to do a back loop double crochet, yarn over. Find the last stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop only. Pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Let's do this once more, yarn over. Into that next stitch is back loop, insert into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Continue with one back loop double crochet into every stitch. We are back and our rows one, two, three are nearly finished. Now we're just going to connect it into the base together once more. So whenever we're connecting our double crochet row into the base, we're going to count up one, two stitches, into that second stitch, insert with a slip stitch. Then to work our way up to our following slip stitch row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then one back loop slip stitch goes into every stitch. From here we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. And a really quick tip, this double crochet slash slip stitch row sequence will slant a little bit, but that's completely fine because it'll all even out once when the front band is parked in. And then lastly, when we're doing our slip stitch rows, make sure that we're not tugging too tightly after every stitch. Otherwise, the following row is going to be too tight to work into. All right, so we're back. We made our way all the way around with our bottom band and did a chain up one and cut right after that last row. Now from here, we're going to start working on the front band. So we're going to be inserting our six millimeter hook still into the bottom corner stitch of our front panel. We're going to want to make sure that the bottom band is on the right side of us and then we're going to be working into the panel that's nearest to us. So start by inserting your hook into this bottom corner stitch. Now the front band is going to be using our primary color only. So insert your primary color yarn onto your hook and then put one single crochet into every stitch working our way up the bottom band and then working our way all the way up the front panel as well until we reach this corner right over here. Then do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you back. All right, so our single crochet row for the front band is complete. Now we're going to get started on the width of our front band and the width is actually going to be done exactly the same way as our bottom band, but it's only going to use our primary color yarn. So reinsert your hook into the bottom corner stitch of our single crochet row, pull through, and then start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our front band to be. I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain four. Once we have our chain, block off that last chain and do a chain three. Then into that chain that we blocked off or the fourth chain from our hook, insert with a double crochet and then put one double crochet into every chain. Now that we put one double crochet into every chain, we're going to connect it into the base the same way that we did for the bottom band. So all we're going to do is just count up one, 
two stitches and slip stitch into that second stitch into the base. And then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and that's it. From here, continue to repeat these two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back to get started on the other side. All right, so one of our front bands is complete. Now we're going to repeat everything we did here on the other side, but we are going to need to insert our hook into a different corner just to make sure that we see the front of the single crochet and the front of the ribbing that we have. So all we're gonna do for the right side is insert our hook into the top corner stitch of our front panel and then with our primary color yarn still do our single crochet row all the way down including down into the bottom band do a chain up of one and cut at the end of the row reinsert your hook along the top so where you started your single crochet row and then make the same chain and then repeat the back loop double and back loop slip stitch rows until we don't have any more left to work into when we don't i'll meet you guys back Alrighty, we are back both of our front bands are completed and now we're going to get started on our hood so first things first, let's make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch that we have into one of our panels, which it will be within the front band. And then we're going to do a single crochet row with our primary color first. So go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into the top of every stitch that we have for our front band. So since I made a total of four chains for my front band, I will have four single crochets right here. Now that we've worked across into our top band, we should have a side single crochet row. We don't want to miss out on that space. So just insert into that top loop with one single crochet. And now from here, we have a bunch of side rows to work into, working our way all the way up and around. So we are gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, so let's get this started. This is my first side row. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Now, this is my following side row, so I'm gonna find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. And that's it. We are going to continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, making our way all the way up and around. Once we reach this top corner right over here, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you guys back with our secondary color yarn. All right, so our single crochet row with our primary color yarn is complete. Now we're going to get started on the height of our hood, and it's just going to start with a double crochet row. But we are going to do the same ribbing that we have for the front band and the bottom band. So we're gonna make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, and we're gonna insert our hook into the top corner stitch on the left. So the same corner that we inserted our hook into for the single crochet row. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and we're all gonna start with a chain three. That chain three does not count as a stitch, we just need the height, and just start with a double crochet row. So yarn over, find that first stitch, and insert with a double crochet. So insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, again, yarn over, into that next stitch, insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and continue with one double crochet into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. All right, so we are back. Our double crochet row with our secondary color yarn is complete, and now from here, we're just going to do a back loop slip stitch row. So chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way around, and that's basically it. For the hood, we aren't gonna have any increases or decreases. So it's just going to be rows of back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way up until this reaches the top of our head. And then I'll meet you back right after a double crochet row so we can seam it all up together. We are back and the entirety of our hood is complete. I have a total of 41 rows. This is a total of 13 inches or 33 centimeters and now we're going to seam it up together. And this is actually going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another one of these back loop slip stitch rows. So we all should have ended right after a back loop double crochet row. All we're gonna do is fold our work in half, making sure that the ribbing that we have is along the outside. Then we're gonna insert our hook into both the corner stitch of the front and back panel. We're going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And let's do the first few seams together. So start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. 
Then find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert only into that back loop. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do that again. Next stitch into the front panel, insert into the front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back. Our hood is all finished up and the last thing we have to do is our armhole detail. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. Then, making sure that we're working with our primary color yarn first, we're going to do a single crochet row along our armhole. So this is going to be pretty simple, I'm just going to talk you guys through it. We're going to start by alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row, working our way up our underarm, so we already know how to do that. Then we should have some regular stitches making our way all the way up and over our shoulder. So just put one single crochet into every stitch making our way all the way up until we are worked into the last stitch right before our shoulder seam and then I'll meet you back. Alright, so we have just single crocheted our way all the way up until we have reached our shoulder seam. Now all we want to do is insert our stitch marker into the stitches that we have on either side of our shoulder seam just so we know where our two middle stitches are. So into this last single crochet that we just made, insert a stitch marker. And then we're going to continue on with our single crochet making our way all the way down. But into that following stitch on the other side of our shoulder seam, we're going to find that first stitch and insert our single crochet into there together. And don't forget to insert a stitch marker into that stitch as well. And these are our two middle stitches. We should have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch markers once when the single crochet row is complete. But just go ahead and complete this row, slip stitch into that chain space, and then do a chain up of one and cut. Our single crochet row with our primary color is complete. Next, we're going to do another single crochet row, but now with our secondary color yarn. So this is going to be fairly easy. Insert your hook into the stitch nearest to our tail end. Then put one single crochet into every stitch, making sure that we're bringing our stitch markers with us. We should end up with the same amount of stitches as this first single crochet row right here. And then I will meet you back so we can start on the length of our armhole detail. All right, so our single crochet row with our secondary color yarn is complete. Now we're going to get started on the detail and this is going to be the same for everyone. So what we're going to do is start by making a chain two. So there's one, there's two. Now we're going to slip stitch into that first chain that we made. So bring your hook down into that first chain, insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And now we're going to connect our row one into the base. So just into that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there to connect row one. Now let's work our way up to the following row. We're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. None of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch and flip our work. Then we're going to find our one stitch from our previous row and do one back loop slip stitch. So insert into that back loop. Yarn over, pull through everything, and since we're along the outer edge, we're going to chain two. That's going to start our following row off with an increase. So that first chain is going to count as a chain, that second chain is going to count as our turning chain, and flip our work. Now into that second chain from our hook, insert with a back loop slip stitch, and then into that following stitch as well with another back loop slip stitch. And now that we're back at the base, let's connect it. So finding that next available stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch, so pull through everything, and that slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Then working our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, still doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. Then whenever along the base, working our way out towards the outer edge, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So here's mine, here's my first one making sure that we're also not working into any of those slip stitches that were worked into the base. Here's my next one. And now that we're at the end of this row, in order to get started on the following row, we're going to chain two. Like I said, that first chain is going to count as a stitch. Second chain is going to count as our turning chain and flip our work. Then into the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. 
Then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. Then connect it into the base the same way that we've been doing. All we're going to do is continue to repeat these two previous rows until this portion of our underarm detail becomes as wide as we'd like for this section to be. Once when it is as wide as we want it to be, I will meet you back at the base. Alright, so I'm back with the increase portion. I have the total width that I'd like for this to be, and I have a total of 9 rows. Now what we're going to do from here is just back loop slip stitch rows, but now without any increases or decreases, making our way all the way up until we're worked into our stitch marker stitch. Once we are, do a chain up of 1 and cut, and then repeat everything we did here on the other side, but without cutting so that we can seam everything together along the top. Alrighty, we are back. We have our second side of our armhole detail completed, and now we're going to seam it all up together. Now this seam is going to be the same as the seam that we did for the hood, so an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're all going to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the first stitch into the front and back panel. So finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert only into that front loop. And then finding that next stitch into the back panel, inserting only into that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. Alrighty, so we are back. Both of our armhole details are completed and now we are all done and now the last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter, those links are down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you all in the next one, bye!